If you're from the northern part of the country, you probably just call these peas. But if you live in the south, you probably call them English peas. So here in the south, when we say peas, we're referring to things like cow peas, field peas, things like zipper cream peas, black eyed peas, pink eyed peas. And when we're talking about these sweet peas, we call them English peas. Now, one of the main reasons we grow our own food is because it just tastes better than the processed food you get at the grocery store. And of all the crops where there's a big difference between homegrown and store-bought, I think English peas is probably the one where there's the greatest difference. Homegrown English peas just taste so much better than those in the can from the grocery store. So today is supposed to be the last day of this never ending summer. We should be done with 90 degree days as of today, according to the weatherman at least. So we're gonna get some English peas in the ground today. If this is your first time on our channel, welcome. Go ahead and hit that subscribe button and that bell button down below so you get notified every time we come out with a new video. If you're a frequent viewer of our channel, it's always good to have you back. So English peas are one of those crops where you kind of have to grow them in a really specific temperature window. They don't like real hot weather, but the frost will kill them. So we have to grow them in kind of early spring and kind of early to mid fall. Now here in the south, that can be a little tricky because in the spring, it can go from a frost in February to getting really hot really quick. And so sometimes the weather just doesn't cooperate and we don't have a big enough window before it gets too hot to grow English peas. In the fall, we usually have a little bigger window because the cool down is a little slower than the warm up in spring. And so we can get some in in the fall when it's just about to break the temperature's just about to break and hopefully we can get a couple good crops off before the frost comes along in say early December but sometimes frost doesn't happen till January or so in those years we can get many 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 harvests of these delicious English peas this plot here is where I've got my fall sweet corn planted and I don't know if you can tell from way back here but it's about four foot tall and already tasseling We'll talk about that in another video. But I left me about four or five feet here on the side of this plot to plant me a row of English peas when the time got right. So we've got us a little one row in here that we're gonna plant. It's probably 40, 45 foot long, which should be plenty of peas for us to eat this fall and winter and even put some up. So I came in here and I cultivated this area a little bit because it's dry and this ground was hard as a rock. And then I took my double wheel hoe with the plow set, made me a little plant and furrow where my row was gonna be. And when I laid that drip tape on this corn here, I went ahead and extended this main line all the way out to the end because I knew I wanted to plant something on this end sooner or later. So I had my main line here and I could hook a line of drip tape into that so i took my drip tape layer and just ran me a single line of drip tape down that furrow there covered it up got nice and buried then we just hooked in to this main line right here put our row start on there and then on the very end of the row we put our row end on there to clamp it off with our drip tape layer when it covers up that drip tape it makes two little mini furrows like this right here on each side of that buried tape but that mini furrow wasn't quite deep enough for planting these peas so I took my little section hoe and I dug out this furrow on this side of the tape a little more so I could plant those peas about one inch deep and then I used that other mini furrow as an indication of where to put my T posts so they were all in a straight line so I know if I put them in that mini furrow there I'm not going to puncture my tape it's going to be just right beside that drip tape. Now I will admit I had a time putting these T-posts in the ground even with the T-post driver. This ground was hard as a rock. It liked to have wore me out but I got them in there nonetheless. So the variety of English pea that I'm growing this fall is called Mr. Big Pea. 
And this variety here is supposed to make really nice big pods of English peas. It's supposed to be really, really productive, nice, heavy yielder. This variety is actually an AAS winner, which means All American Selections winner. So you know it's a good variety. So for this row here that's almost 50 foot long, I'm using two packets of seed. Each packet contains about 200 seeds. So two packets should be enough for this 40 to 50 foot row. We also sell these peas by the pound. So if you need a little bit more, you can get those as well. Now a little trick I like to do before I'm gonna plant English peas is I like to soak them in water overnight before I'm gonna plant them. This kind of jump starts the germination process. Peas can take a lot of water and if they don't get it, can be slow to germinate. So this is gonna help out my germination rate by a good bit. So I took them and I poured them in this mason jar here and put some water in here, let them soak overnight and they doubled, almost tripled in size. So once we put these babies in the ground and give them a little more water, shouldn't take long at all for them to come up. And since we're growing these peas vertically on a trellis, we're gonna plant them pretty thick. I'm gonna put these seeds about two to three inches apart, put them real thick along this row so we get a nice, dense coverage of peas on that trellis and we get a lot, a lot of harvest so we can eat some fresh. We can also put some in the freezer so we'll have them throughout the winter and into the spring. Now, if you're planting several rows of these peas, you could use our garden seeder. It will plant these English peas like a dream. But since I'm just doing one row here, I'm gonna just drop them in by hand. So we're gonna drop those peas in there pretty close, take our rake, cover them up, pack them down a little bit, and then we'll talk about our trellising technique. And now the last thing, well, almost last thing I'm gonna do is put up my trellis. English peas grow way better when you give them something to climb on. You can grow them without a trellis and still get a couple harvests, but they'll grow way better if you grow them vertically on a trellis. Now, as far as trellising goes, you can use those old heavy cattle panels or hog panels, and I've used them many, many years. But I have gone to this stuff right here, this trellis netting, which works just as good as a cow panel, but it's so much easier to set up, and so much easier to take down. Now we sell this trellis netting in several different heights and lengths. We sell a five foot tall one, which I've been using for cucumbers, works really well. But for these English peas, I'm gonna use the four foot tall stuff. And when, like I said, we have several different lengths as well. You can get the long one and cut it to length. But for this row, which is about 40, 45 foot long, I'm using this 50 foot long piece and I'll just trim off the end what I don't need. Should have worked perfect for this little row right here. So I've got my T-posts spaced about 10 feet apart. I've got one on each end and three in the middle, kind of equally spaced. I didn't measure it, I just kind of eyeballed it. Should be fine. And I want to show you just how easy this stuff right here is to install. All we need is this trellis netting, our T-posts, and a few zip ties. All right, all right, all right. That was quick and easy. It didn't even take 10 minutes to get that trellis set up there. So to get that Horta Nova trellis nice and tight, you just cinch it down on one end with zip ties and then pull it tight all the way down on the end post. I cinch it there and then I come back and I put zip ties on these middle posts here to hold everything in place. This stuff works really good. It's really strong doesn't break and even when I had a real heavy crop of cucumbers it sagged a tiny bit but not a lot I don't expect it to sag at all with these English peas here and so when these babies get growing they'll grab hold of that little poly twine right there for that Horta Nova trellis and start climbing up it 
and I can't really explain it but so far from using this stuff for whatever reason plants will climb up it better they don't need as much training as you do with say that galvanized cattle panel or hog panel I, I don't know why but for some reason this stuff is easier for the plants to grab hold to and it just makes a really awesome trellis now the last thing I'm going to do here is I'm going to take my water and wine and soak in this bed of English peas really good. This area here is super, super dry. It hasn't seen any moisture in over a month and a half. So I'm going to take my water and wine and soak it in good. Once these peas germinate, that drip tape will give it plenty enough water once those roots get to crawling a little bit. But I want to help it out, make sure everything germinates well. So I'm going to soak it in probably this afternoon and couple times a day until those peas get up and germinate so if you're growing English peas this fall I'd love to hear about it also I'd like to hear regionally what you call these things Do you call them garden peas you call them just peas or do you call them English peas like we do so put that in the comments below tell us what these things are called in your region of the country if you have any other questions about planting English peas or anything like that put those in the comments as well I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Go ahead and give me a good thumbs up there and we will see you guys next time.